All right, so anybody who has looked into buying a new baseball glove has probably come across 44. Reason is, is they make custom gloves for very cheap. And when I say very cheap, I mean they're selling a custom kip glove, like so, for 185. Whereas other companies selling the same general product are selling it for either like 350 or even all the way up to like 450. The idea of them going ahead and selling it for under $200 is crazy because it makes you go, is it even gonna be a good glove? I personally have 11 total. And so I'm going to basically help you guys understand whether or not it is worth actually getting a glove from them. My goal is to try my absolute hardest to give you just straight facts about the gloves and not just tell you my personal opinion. This glove right here holding my mic is a Rawlings Pro 1000 HC. Wonderful, beautiful, amazing glove. But there's people out there who just aren't gonna like it. There's people out there who aren't gonna like the way it's shaped. It's a $250 glove and it's beautiful and it's awesome, but there's people out there who just won't like it. Now, these gloves are not gonna be in any particular order. I'm holding this one, so we'll start with it. I went ahead and got an 11 inch glove here. It's a sweet looking glove, I love the thing. I got the one piece web on it. One of the things I try to do with my 44s is simply get a new feature on each one because I basically want to try everything that 44 has because they have a ton of different options for customization. So what I did with this is I went dual welting and I got the one piece web. Those were sort of like the two things. I'd never had a one piece web before. You can probably tell in some of the clips of me playing catch, I tend to get ones that pop in and out. That bothers me a ton. I absolutely hate that. And so that's something that I do not like about this glove. Something that I've experienced from 44 is actually having that with a couple of my other gloves from them. And so that's a huge turn off to me. I really don't like that. But from all my 44s that I've had from them from the past, say, three years, none of them have had that. And so I think it's just something that they've gotten better at. Gloves have gotten better over time, you could say. And so I'm not worried about that anymore. On to the next one. This is my 574 from 44. Basically what that means, it's just the model. It's pretty much a Rawlings model. Actually somewhat similar to what I have right here. There is no welting in between the finger and that's the same idea, no welting in between the fingers. Personally, if I had to pick just one glove model to use the rest of my life, it's gonna be this one. I love the feeling of having no welting. It feels great, it's more comfortable. You can tell it looks a little bit goofy. I relaced it myself. It used to have yellow lacing and it just all I could think about was McDonald's when I looked at it, so I had to release it. And I went with purple just to kind of do something different. Something actually really interesting about this glove though is I got this glove from CPSX44. I'll put that right here. CPSX44 is actually this guy on Instagram. He'll receive like a care package of gloves from 44 where something went wrong. For example, this glove here was literally bought in Venezuela with like stolen credit cards. He found out they were stolen after the glove was built already. And so they just have an extra glove that they don't know what to do with. And then he sells them for absurd cheap. I highly recommend checking him out on Instagram because he sells them for under $100. So I literally only paid like 80 bucks for this glove. So again, the special thing about this glove is the 574. And I personally think it's the most comfortable model that 44 offers. The worst part about this glove is just kind of how ugly it is. It's red, yellow, and purple. It doesn't look great. I honestly like it more with the purple on it because at least just gives it some character. Before it was just like the Ronald McDonald Club and I wasn't a huge fan of it. These really aren't in any order. They're just totally random. All right, here's my JP11 with Paisley leather. Those are the two things that stand out on this glove. Paisley leather is just a certain type of leather design. It's simply a Paisley design sort of like a cowboy look and feel, like the bandanas and everything. And so it's a print on there, like it's 3D, you can kind of feel it. And then the next biggest thing is just the fact that it is the JP11, which is the Japanese style model. You can see that black little piece of leather that comes out from the palm into the back to separate the index finger from the rest of the fingers. So the purpose is, rather than the index finger just being with all the other fingers, it's more like the index finger is with the web giving it a bigger pocket. It's like a whole nother part of the web, a whole nother part of the pocket. For the JP11, it's sort of like you're just doing that without having to shift over. 
Um, there's other purposes to it too, but I feel like that's what I noticed the most myself. This glove is also going to come with split welting, which technically I believe is actually stronger than rolled welting, but a lot of people don't like the way it looks. I will say the JP11 was far, far, far looser than any of my other 44s, and I like a stiff glove. So in the end, I'm not a huge fan of this glove. Like I. I enjoyed it when I used it, but now afterwards, I'm, I'm not gonna ever use this glove again because it's too loose. I've tightened it as much as I can again. I'm not honestly 100% sure if it's because of the Paisley or because of the JP11 itself. All right, this one's pretty cool. So this is a little 44 trainer. I actually didn't design this glove myself, but the dude who designed it did a great job. It looks sweet. So this one is suede, and so that's what sticks out with this glove. It's also a trainer, which means it's nine and a half inches long, so that sticks out a little too. Or it doesn't stick out because it's so short. This also has red and blue steel, as 44 calls it. It's just a very, very shiny version of red and blue. These both feel like they're really soft, so if you've got a glove with a ton of it on it, it, I do believe it's gonna come out softer. Whereas the suede on this glove actually feels like, I'm pretty surprised, I really like the black suede. It actually feels like it might be either the same stiffness as any of their other leathers or potentially slightly stiffer, not 100% sure, but I love this glove. I have used it a little bit, just kind of playing around in the front yard and stuff. It's a trainer that uses the same exact leather as any of their other gloves. You're not skipping out on any kind of quality, but you also are paying for it. It's not a very cheap trainer. You can pick up another trainer from somebody else, maybe like 60 bucks, whereas this one you're paying to get it custom with nice leather and everything. It's a lot of fun. This one means a lot. This thing is completely stiff, it's rock hard, and 44 actually went ahead and gave this to me, my wife, my daughter, a while back when my wife was pregnant. There's a heart on the inside here. It's a, you know, one piece solid web, pink everywhere, and I, I love it. I love it. This thing is so sick. Um, I literally think I'm not going to break it in all the way up until it gets to a point till my daughter Ruth can break in herself. That's gonna be crazy. All right, next up, I actually really love this glove. This is my gamer from last year for slow pitch softball. What I got special on this glove was the American flag logo. I love it, it's sick and it's pretty dang durable. I actually think that this one's more durable than their other logos. It's like stiffer and harder. Some of their other logos start to peel a little bit. I've seen it happen. Then the next biggest thing is I got dual welting again, but on a bigger glove this time. And I'll be honest, I'm very satisfied with the fact that I went with dual welting. My intention was to make it stiffer and that turned out great. I also went with the red palm lining on this one. And I'm going to tell you guys, it will make your hand red. If you get blue, it's gonna make your hand a little blue. It looks sweet. I don't care at all that it made my hand red, but some of you guys might care. Something else that is actually very, very important to know with 44, I don't necessarily know if I have a way of proving it, but I believe that when you get either blonde, black, maybe tan, leather, it is going to turn out a little bit more high quality. When it doesn't have to be dyed like say a royal blue glove does, it's going through the extreme. I mean, it just has to get turned blue. So it has an effect on the leather itself. And this glove, I, I just, I think it just feels better. It's one of the best feeling gloves I have. It's just smoother. And I think it has to do with the fact that it just went all blonde. All right, here we go. This is just all black 44. This actually isn't even mine. It is mine, but it's not. I got this glove on eBay paid like 80 bucks for it. What's special about this glove is that it's mesh. This is the only mesh glove I have from 44, and I'm actually a big fan of their mesh. I personally think it's great compared to a lot of other companies' mesh. There's also a lot of snake skin on this glove. I don't think the snake skin takes away any kind of performance from the glove. It looks sweet, and it even feels pretty good. All right, now this is special. This is my first 44 that I ever got. It's blonde and navy blue, but the glove itself is horrible. This is potentially the worst glove I own. 44 came such a long way. I got my glove. I was happy with it because it was a custom glove, but maybe after a few months, I was realizing this glove kind of stinks. I can't even use this in game like I wanted to. No matter how hard I tried, balls would come through this part of the web. Honestly, as soon as I found that out, I probably should have contacted them. But hey, in the end, this started 
quite a long journey because this is one of the first gloves that like I ever had that started my whole collection, so I'm not gonna complain. Or at least I'm not gonna complain any more than I already have. <laughs> this is actually a perfect segue into this glove here. So this is my first signature series from 44. This is like within the first maybe few months that 44 started making their Kip leather gloves. But what you'll notice on this glove, it's 11 inches. Don't ask me why I bought multiple gloves that were 11 inches. I played like third and shortstop, so I don't even know why I ever got a glove this small. I got the finger pad on this, and so that's another sort of like standout thing. I enjoy the finger pad, it feels good, but comparing it to other finger pads, say from Rawlings, like a, a Rawlings finger pad feels 10 times better than this. This is just a flat piece of leather, that's it. I also went ahead and didn't get the wrist piece here. It is a one piece wrist that continues. And I think it looks sick. I like the look personally better than when you do have the wrist piece cut off. This is a big one. So this is my denim 44 first basement. Now, I'm sad to say that this glove is pretty much in the same condition as to when you guys last saw it, like a year ago or something like that. I got the denim, was super pumped, and I honestly thought I was gonna be playing more baseball. I thought we were gonna get into a baseball league, but we've only played slow pitch softball and this is not big enough to use. But my thoughts on the denim. The way it works is it simply has a ton of little lines into it. It kind of feels like denim. That's like the way to explain it. It is leather, it is not denim. I didn't just get an ordinary first basement. I went ahead and got the RB5 and it sort of looks like a little ax right here. It doesn't really make any difference to the feel of a glove. It's gonna be the same thing as the other first basements. It's just that extra piece of leather to give it a chance to just design more, make it look cooler. I think it was a good move by 44 because it allows you to customize more. Oh, I almost forgot. We have our channel logo on this glove, which is super sick. That's something else. If you want, you can just get a custom logo on your glove. That's pretty sweet. And here we are, our last glove. I actually have a lot to say about this glove, okay? So this glove here, I just kind of went wild. I got just a crazy colorway and I'm pretty satisfied with it. It looks great. I got mine here, which if you haven't noticed, a lot of my gloves say mine and it's simply because the glove is mine. I got the cross here. I got like the 3D logo patch here. I think it's pretty obvious what's different about this glove and it's the obsidian. I should also mention this glove is not yet broken in and it's because I had intentions to use it for this season of softball and ended up using a different glove because I was gifted one by an awesome person. The obsidian on this glove surprised me a lot. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'd felt Rawlings version of it before. So my biggest takeaway is it is extremely stiff and it doesn't seem to like adapt as much or as quickly as leather does. Basically, it just takes longer to break in. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I need to put a lot more work on this to really find out more about the obsidian. But I think in the end, I think this thing is going to stay stiff really long. Uh, but as long as the rest of the glove does break in, that could be a good thing. It could just mean you're gonna have a glove that lasts longer. I also went ahead, I got the Wilson style wrist lining where it's like a dry fit pad. I don't know how to explain it. It's not fur. I don't necessarily love it. I don't hate it. If I'm being perfectly honest though, out of all my 44s, this one seemed to be constructed the least quality. I didn't like the way the palm felt. It kind of feels like there's some like air bubbles in between it. And so I'm not a huge fan of that. If it was like any worse, if I could find one more thing wrong with it, I would have honestly just contacted 44 and asked to just kind of work something out because it wasn't too hot. The thing is, my final thoughts on 44 is, yeah, they're great gloves, but they're not the best gloves. If I want to just simply have the best glove that I can and money wasn't a problem, I'm gonna go buy a Rawlings, maybe a Wilson if I wanted to, but everyone's different. Some people are gonna say this is the best company by far. Other people are gonna say this. And so all I'm saying, 44 is great because of a great price. The leather is good, but there's inconsistency between all their gloves, but it's kind of natural. Because they're custom gloves with a different web, different shape, everything, different length every time, your gloves are gonna feel very different. Whereas I can go buy the same exact Pro 1000 right here from someone else and it's gonna feel the same because it's the same glove. In the end, 44 for the price they sell a glove is by far the best bang for your buck. Like I will hold to that, I truly believe that. And that's why I encourage people to buy from them if that's what you're looking for. If you just want a good glove for a good price, you're not trying to spend 250 bucks. They have sales all the time, so you can get a custom glove for like 150. 
that's the way to do it.